Uh, hey everyone, uh, it's me again. Um, finally, um, I'm been excited to review this chapter, but fortunately, I had to take a little bit of time to reread it again. And and this uh, first chapter has like, I believe, over 70 pages, and I was not disappointed. But as probably not many people knew, um, Sui Ishida, um, the creator of Tokyo Ghoul and Tokyo Ghoul uh, uh, Re, uh, was gonna um, introduce us with another uh, one of his um, manga works, another story, and we finally learned the name. Uh, I believe it's called Chojin X. And man, I was not disappointed to what I saw. Honestly, he's one of my favorite um, um, authors for manga because I I love his artwork, especially in Tokyo uh, Ghoul. Man, it's just beautiful, just so detailed. The storyline, his characters. Man, I was not disappointed seeing this, and we could see some of the similarities from Tokyo Ghoul, but. I really don't want to compare it too much about it, but um, man, it's not hard to see those little Easter eggs, the similarities. But uh, let's begin reviewing the first chapter of Chojin X. I mean, even the panel looks um, man, it looks incredibly beautiful, but uh, kind of like creepy and unsettling at the same time. We see that this uh, looks like a vulture and there's a kid kind of like he's like embracing like a kid and the kid just looking on top like above him it, it looks pretty cool I, I love that cover but the first chapter begins um it's on the plane we see uh probably a main character who knows it's this little girl that drops like a tomato tomato and this little uh, old lady uh, returns the, the tomato to the little girl and compliments it that it's a pretty nice uh, tomato, tomato, well, whatever. Some people might call it this or this or that. We learned that the little girl uh, is on the way for like some type of fair that uh, she cannot miss. And in this particular fair, it's a type of competition to decide um, uh, who has the best produce? Then there's another kid. Um, he, um, she wants to win this competition. Uh, I mean, um, this will bring more money into her life, and I guess she just wants to uh, have a better life. And it's pretty con funny seeing, I guess, a little bit about her saying that she wants to buy a big house, a dog, like a, I guess marry some type of like good-looking guy. And having nine kids, I'm like, wait, what? Nine kids? <laughs> but then uh, things start taking like a pretty interesting uh, turn. We see this weird guy. He looks agitated and upset. And he says, oh, he's trying to get past the old lady to go to the bathroom. But we see he's getting even, even more agitated to the point that when the lady can move fast enough, He's like about to hit her. I'm like, whoa, what the hell? And we see like the little girl uh, like literally uh, stops and is like, bro, what are you doing? I guess it, even like, I started saying, I was, uh, like, I'm sorry, I guess it's just the airplane, uh, jitters, uh, that sort of stuff. But then things take even a more of a dark turn. We see like there's this big explosion uh, in this particular area of the plane and we see that his hand is kind of engulfed into like smoke like fire and then we see a bunch of people like um like literally combusting into flames and also the little girl and it's just crazy i'm like whoa what the hell is this and then we i guess go away from the plane and we see this little boy who notices the plane I'm like so the plane is not even far from them and we learned the identity of this uh, other boy uh, oh yeah I forgot to mention I don't 
I don't think they stated the girl's name. Yeah, they didn't say the girl's name. So I'm like, man, I'm, I guess I'm gonna have to refer him to the girl. But let's go back to this new character that they introduced uh, with his name. Uh, uh, I believe his name is uh, Kurohara uh, to Tokyo. I think that's just how you say this name. I don't want to say Tokyo because uh, it's completely different. It's Tokyo. And I, I noticed the similarities that he has uh, to Tokyo Go Reef. Um, one of the characters, I believe his name is uh, Kuki uh, Uriya. Yeah, I believe that character. He looks kind of similar to him. We learned that this little, uh, this kid's name is, um, I'm just gonna call him to Tokyo. Uh, he's age 16. And it appears he's in this type of school. And the school is called Suhuro High. And after class ends, we see him walking down the street and he sees um I get this this woman getting harassed by a group of thugs. So he I guess he takes out his phone and calls for a friend to help. And it doesn't take very long for his friend to arrive and he immediately uh, beats up the thugs. I mean he beats up one of the thugs so bad that his bones like literally uh, come out of his uh, arms I'm like oh my god and uh, we learned that the boy's name uh, is um uh, Higashi Asuma and we see that this boy has some similarity to like a jungle version of Kaneki but like with white hair and after uh, the um, the fight ends the the lady uh, thanks the boy for rescuing him uh, I think she said she has like a job interview to go to. I uh, don't remember that much. Then we see that the the kid, um, Asuma, starts looking on his phone and he learns about the plane crash. And I believe he says that the plane cra uh, crashed pretty nearby. So I'm like, I mean, that explains how uh, Tokyo uh, saw the plane from his classroom. And then Asuma says some interesting things where he wonders maybe the culprit was a Trojan. And we start seeing a little bit more information of what a Trojan is. Uh, he says that uh, Trojans, uh, they could get away with anything they want and have a lot of power and strength. So I'm like, are they like almost in a way like goals and then he says he starts comparing the trojans to like uh roly polies as you know uh roly polies i think they're active like in um in dry places and when they get to like um some type of like damp place uh, they stop because uh i guess it's because it's not dry anymore that's the explanation they kind of start giving here in the manga I mean, I don't really know much about roly polies other than the. I found it pretty cute how they kind of able to roll up their body like in self defense, and you kind of hardly see them around uh, nowadays. So I'm like, I wonder why he's kind of comparing the Trojans to roly polies. So I'm like, mm, I think we get hope we get a little more information about this. We see that Asuma he decides to go home and asks his dad, um, uh, I guess, for a way to help him out uh, it's still not very much is still known I'm like hmm, I still have so many questions then we get to see the group of thugs we see the one that has his arms broken and then we see this particular guy with a bunch of needles I'm like Ugh, it just gave me the creeps and he says that he has something that might help this guy and he's like holding a needle I'm like this does not look good. Uh, then we meet uh, Tokyo's family. We learned that um, her sister is actually paying for his tuition. We also learned a little bit more about um, Tokyo's friend uh, Asuma that he has won uh, like a judo tournament like five times. He has excellent grades and his dad um, is a big shot in the police. Then we go back to like a, like a little flashback when both Asuma and Tokyo were younger, they were little kids. We see that they're visiting this zoo. 
and I guess their teacher asked them like to draw uh, an animal that they see themselves as. Of course, uh, Asuma gets compared to a lion, I guess because of his bravery. And and as Tokio, uh, his classmates compare him to a vulture. As you know, vultures just wait around uh, for their prey to die. So I guess this hurts Tokio's feeling. Asuma uh, comes comes to him and tries to rear um confront him and tell tells him that two vultures are able to fly the highest than any other uh, bird and of course he even tells him that dude when lions fight they literally use all the energy to hunt even if it's a mere rabbit then on the next panel we see that um both Asuma and Tsukio arrive uh, at the plane crash site and we learn that 200 survive um I mean there were 200 survivors I was like, uh, how is that possible? Which makes me wonder if that little girl that was literally in flames survived. But we see that uh, on the plane's crash site, the plane, it's pretty much intact. It's only a part of it that was burned. Which I'm wondering if those people right there survived. What happened to that guy? Which I believe very likely is a Trojan because uh, he because of his hand was like literally engulfed in flames so i'm guessing he's a flame uh trojan uh who knows then on the way home um we see that group of thugs attack um uh both Atsuma and Tokyo. and it, it was just pretty shocking to see that you know that guy uh, Atsuma beat up so bad that <clears throat> his, arm, his bones literally came out of his arms uh, his arms were completely healed and he literally starts beating up Asuma pretty bad. Asuma of course try to, tries to fight back but we see that the thug, uh, I guess his um, body isn't bright, it looks like it's almost made out of rubber. Then we see that uh, he's now a flexi Chojin. I'm shocked that the contest of this needle literally could make anyone into a Trojan. Then we see the syringe, I mean, then we see, you know, that guy that gave the syringes and he starts embracing his other two friends and I guess he just hugged them to a car. We saw that he had like these two syringes in his mouth, but I guess when he killed them, um, the, the syringes, um, they just uh, moved away they they just jump away seeing his friend all beat up uh, Tokyo um, immediately grabs him and they make a run for it uh, but event eventually um, Asuma notices a syringe and he he decides to to inject himself saying that dude this guy is not hesitating he's literally out here to kill us and there is no way I could defeat him even with my martial arts training and of course Tokyo tells him you know what uh, I just can't stand being a, a just leering um, just an uh, a spectator, spectator and he decides to inject himself as well he says that if he doesn't do anything to help out his friend besides just standing there and just look at him he just feels that they're not gonna be friends anymore so both decide, you know what, we're both gonna inject ourselves with this. And we see this panel, it looks just pretty dull. This is why I love the art for um, uh, Sui Ishida. Honestly, his artwork is just astounding. I just love the detail, the dark theme. And from this first chapter, it's just, it's just phenomenal. Then we see that this guy with the flexi children arrives. And he starts beating up Tokyo, but then we see uh, something happen to Tokyo. We see like a bunch of feathers, and then we see that finally the syringe uh, uh, effects kicked in, and now he's a beastal Trojan. Honestly, the artwork it reminded me when, um, you know, when Kaneki was known as the centipede because he was trying to become like a Kajuga. Uh, sorry, I can't remember the name that well, but you know with the mask it, it, Honestly, it kind of looks a little like 
the the centipede but but the detail that he drew in it it does it does kind of look like a vulture then we see uh tokyo beating up this guy so bad i mean he literally sets him up to the sky the panel with with that guy literally uh with the huge full moon it looks pretty funny but man but after the fight ends we see that asuma is still on the floor and we see tokyo rush into him and this is where um the chapter ends and honestly i'm very impressed with the chap with the first chapter i'm very excited to see the next one i mean you know i really love um sweet ishida's uh, uh, artwork his style his storytelling uh the depth of his characters honestly i'm just really excited i'm wondering uh what exactly a trojan x um how many are there in this world did that little girl and the the grandma survive um, i really hope so but who knows um but anyway uh thanks for watching and i hope to see you on the next uh trojan video